ever run across those top 10 lists of the goriest video games? For whatever reason, such extreme games intrigue me, so when I saw today's game and many of those lists, I had to own it. The game is Harvester, developed by DigiFX Interactive and published by Merit Studios in 1996. Harvest, population 51, nope, 50! Holy crap, someone just died while I was reading this. Hmm. Yes, this looks pleasant, judging by this artwork, though I'm not sure what's more disturbing, the blood and gore or the fact that it apparently makes use of mid-90s full motion video. Inside the box, you get the game on three CD-ROMs as well as the surprisingly extensive manual, which covers everything from how to install the game to how to click on people, click on places, and click on things because adventure games, yo. Harvester begins with a pre-rendered 3D intro sequence, showing off what is apparently some sort of nightmare followed by the world's largest and slowest alarm clock. Then a freckled pale man appears and runs his hand through his hair, signifying that yes, if this guy can get an acting gig, then so can you. He then puts on his shirt so as not to completely blind you, and the game begins. In Harvester, you play as... Uh... Your goal is to... well... In Harvester, you play a human male that has lost his memory. In typical point-and-click adventure game style, you can point and click to adventure through the game, stylishly. Look around the room, pick up any useful items, interact with interactive interactions, and check out the character's thoughts on things. Like this clarinet some fat high school girl obviously left there. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, well, we may not know much about our mysterious Wonder Boy here, but we can already assume he can fall on the rude and crude side of things. Once you start looking through the rest of the house, it quickly becomes apparent that you're in some kind of exaggerated 1950s Americana fantasy, complete with the tropes and assumptions that you'd expect from such a setting. Though even those tend to feel just a bit too much somehow. Just because I'm doing housework doesn't mean I have to be a drudge. It's a wife's duty to look good for her husband at all times. It turns out your name is Steve Mason, and apparently you always were a kidder. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. You always were a kidder, Steve. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. You've always been a kidder, Steve. Okay, I think they're trying to tell me something. Anyway, from here, you amble around town doing your best to convince people you are not, in fact, a kidder. The game is divided up into six days, and each day you'll have a set number of things you can do, places you can access, and people you can talk to. The first day is pretty harmless enough. Just kind of meet the people, meet your surroundings, meet the meat. It takes dedication and a strong stomach. Yeah, sorry cat lovers. This game just got a bit grim. In fact, it'll get grim for you human lovers pretty soon too, so if you're squeamish at slightly gross things, then you should probably grow a spine. Or, I mean, turn away right now. Anyway, the game makes basically no sense at the very beginning, and it does a very good job at making you question absolutely everything. Like, are these people even people? I mean, are they robots or something? Because there's a bit of a Westworld meets Stepford Wives thing going on. Mercy, what a terrible thing to say, isn't it, ladies? Yes, terrible. Everyone is an over-the-top stereotype or satire on some type of character, and I mean, like, it's even more so than your typical mid-90s FMV-riddled adventure game. Like, seriously, firemen? Firemen? Men that are flaming? Oh, they're gay and like art and fabric. Wow. Stop it! You're messing me up! And also, what's with this town you're in called Harvest? It seems to be cut off from the rest of the world, and why is it in the 1950s when you clearly remember bits of the future? And why the nuts does everyone expect you to either get a job as a butcher or join the Lodge and the Order of the Harvest Moon? Well, turns out that's what the point of the game is, at least initially. Try to get into the Lodge and join the Order. The problem is you can't do so unless you first find and submit an application, and then perform a series of tasks in order to show your worthiness or some cliched crap like that. But I mean, of course it'd be a cliché. Everything else is, right? Right. That's what's so interesting about Harvester from the get-go. You think it's just a lazy story effort at first, but it's not long before you just know that there's something else far more interesting going on than that this is all just a cover-up for something. You just have no freaking clue what it is exactly, and that's what keeps you trudging onward through the campy set pieces, hammy voice acting, and somewhat predictable amnesia story. That and moments like this, where if you screw up, you accidentally nuke the world. It 
If you don't set off World War III, it's not long before you meet someone named Stephanie Potsdam, a girl that you're apparently set to marry in a few weeks. On talking to her, you find out that she has no memory just like you. Could you be the only two sane people in this town? Should you get it on through an awkward FMV cutscene even though you just met? Why yes and yes, that only makes sense. After you've bumped some uglies and apparently started caring for each other, you make a pact to find a way out of the town together, and even though you're hesitant, your best bet is by joining the Lodge. The only problem is that the Lodge's sergeant-at-arms here is giving you tasks that are increasingly more violent, either against property, people, or both. Know then that securing the application was but the first step on your road to enlightenment. Now you must complete a series of tasks to prove your worthiness. And whatever you do, don't look underneath my robe. There's a reason I'm making these pleasured expressions, and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything going on underneath my robe. Oh yeah, right there. This is where the game starts taking a seriously dark turn. You make friends throughout your time in Harvest, and without spoiling anything, sometimes you have to do things that may affect them in a way that's not so great. I mean, scratching a cranky old guy's flawless Tucker torpedo sedan is one thing, but burning down the livelihood of someone who has already lost plenty, causing them to murder their only child and then kill themselves, that's something else entirely. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to get into the lodge, right? Apparently so, because that's the game and you've chosen to play along. Violence in the role it plays in society is something commented on heavily in Harvester, and that is not something I was expecting. Everything from your TV-obsessed, psychopathic younger brother Hank, who soullessly rambles on about his sadistic tendencies, to the fact that talking about sex in Harvest is taboo, not because it's the conservative 1950s, but because intercourse here is a masochistic torture session where the female doms the male so badly that he's nearly killed. Violence is as American as apple pie and low SAT scores. But what about studies that have shown that children become more violent when watching violence? Violence is entertainment. I just put it on the air. If some kid watches, that says something about the kid, not me. The full extent of what the game is trying to say doesn't come together completely until the very end once you figure out the secret purpose behind the town of Harvest, but it's obvious from the beginning that there's a theme regarding the influence of violence in media going on. Once you've killed a bunch of people and generally wreaked enough havoc on the town to get everyone, well, not really that affected because they're already thoroughly screwed up, it's time to insert Disc 3 and enter the Lodge. And wow does the gameplay take a turn for the worse here. The first two-thirds of the game are adventure gaming awesomeness, fun dialogue puzzles collecting and making clever use of your inventory, figuring out the story of what's going on with the town and how it pertains to your own struggles and all that good stuff. But then you reach the inner sanctum of the lodge and, well, it turns into a clunky survival horror nightmare that feels sporadic at best and phoned in at worst. You've got a maze of weirdness to explore that works just like a sideshow house of horrors. One minute you're fighting a giant chess piece, another you're murdering evil clowns, and then you're having sex with hookers and getting STDs, and no, I'm not making this up. It jumps at least 17 sharks with its randomness, and then the gameplay itself is freaking infuriating on top of that. The puzzles are often convoluted and occasionally timed, the combat is far from ideal, and the charming weirdness of the town of Harvest is all but gone, and replaced with utter absurdity laced with a topping of what the dick just happened. Oh, but you get to see a mother get eaten by her zombie children, that's nice. You don't know the half of it. And actually, this is about the nastiest scene in the game, which is surprising since I was led to believe the game was chock full of disturbing violence and gore. Maybe I'm a bit desensitized, but I've seen far worse than what was included in Harvester, even in contemporary games like Mortal Kombat 2 and Phantasmagoria. But anyway, eventually you reach the end of the game and you're provided with your biggest choice in the game so far, which is far more complicated than the previous choices of playing the game like a nice guy or as a complete sociopath. Nope, all those choices didn't really matter much. This is the one that counts. You can choose the bad ending or the not quite so bad, but still definitely bad ending. How delightful. I'm not gonna spoil the endings, but let me just say that I was satisfied that they didn't leave me with too many unanswered questions regarding the nature of the town and your place in it. And really, that's about how I would sum up the entire game. Satisfying. 
Yes, it took a turn for the lackluster towards the end with its side-scrolling awkwardness, but the overall journey is something I'm glad I took. I am not the biggest adventure gamer by any means, but I had a lot of fun roaming the streets of Harvest and seeing what twisted shenanigans its citizens were up to every day, and what kind of horrible thing I would have to pull off next. The fact that it also brings up relevant points regarding violence in society, violence in media and video games, and how it may or may not affect people on a psychological level is an unexpected bonus. I'm surprised that the game wasn't just a mindless gore fest like some have made it out to be over the years, and I'm surprised it didn't spark more discussion back in the day. Though I guess I'm actually not, since it failed commercially and the violent game debate peaked several years prior to the game's release. But that's neither here nor there, because right now I would say that this game is still worth checking out. Yes, the graphics are dated and the gameplay may be somewhat quaint, but that only adds to the charm for me, and with it also taking a step beyond by being genuinely interesting to discuss, not to mention having the ability to genuinely get under my skin every so often, well that's even better. So if you can manage to track down a copy of this cult favorite, know that I am not a kidder when I say it is very much recommended. I'd say this was death by natural causes. Natural causes? You can't live without a spinal cord, son. Want to see more videos on nasty horror games and not-so-nasty horror games? And a bunch of other stuff. Click some of these videos if you're curious. Or just click subscribe to be notified when any more are released, which is every week. And as always, thanks for watching.